after that, you wouldn't think there was that wrong with it, would you? Well, there is, and I'm gonna show you what. So the first mistake I made, unfortunately, with this engine, I didn't unplug the Vanos solenoids uh, in the first instance, later on I did, but I didn't actually capture that on the recording. Uh, you see that centre line there, it's showing that the blue cyan is a bit more advanced to the left compared to this one. Well, the reason for that is because the DME is actually commanding it to do that as it should. It's quite normal, is that? So I wanted to clear that up straight away in that sense, but it should look like that and it doesn't, so we've got a fault. So before we get into the fault codes, let's have a close look at this signal. So the magenta is the exhaust camshaft signal and it's shifted to the right. If you look at it, it should be a mirror image of the green, greenish blue or cyan colored one. That's the intake where my finger is there now. That's what it should look like. It should be basically a mirror image of each other on this particular engine anyway. So let's pause it and I'll go through it in a bit more detail. So I'll try my best to explain this. I'm not an expert by any means in engine building, but I know the basics. So I'll tell you the basics. That's the crankshaft position sensor signal in yellow. And you might have noticed that through all those little lines, there's some spaces where the, where the gap is much bigger. And the reason for that is those are basically the top dead center uh, spaces, if you want to call them that. So on the crankshaft position sensor trigger wheel, there'll be a space where there's less teeth. And because there's less teeth, the sensor picks that up. And obviously the engine ECU, the DME in this case, knows exactly then where top dead center position is. And it's important because obviously it uses that for the engine timing and for spark advance and for everything. So top dead center obviously on any engine is uh, of vital importance basically. And you can clearly see it though. It's a really nice uh, scope is this thing, think tool scope, this thing scope, because you can see it nice and clearly. So. That's the signal, and they're the TDC reference markers. Then we need to deal with what we have below. First is the cyan, I would call it cyan core. That is the intake camshaft. And in this case, it's center line is just a bit to the right, but it's actually timed absolutely correctly. There's nothing wrong with it whatsoever. So we don't really need to worry about the crankshaft timing in that sense, because really, according to our other diagram, what we have from Rodkey, a Ukrainian website, very useful we can actually see that it's more or less in the same position there might be a bit of variance because the chain on this car is basically stretched but on the whole it kind of is, is reasonable and it almost looks like in more or less the right position and that was a good marker because then when we look at the uh, signal underneath the magenta signal um there's a massive difference there you can see it's completely shifted way way over to the right it's about half an inch over and that one is the exhaust camshaft um, position sensor. And we could say it's retarded because it's doing its work after top dead center, whereas it kind of should be sort of in between. If you look at it, obviously it should kind of open um, a bit earlier in that sense. It's not really doing the job at all, is it? I mean, it's not lining up. It should line up with the intake cam, really. So that's the issue with that. And it's a good diagnostic indicator to know exactly what's going on with the engine without stripping it. Because at the end of the day, if you can do this without stripping the engine, you've saved yourself loads. You've saved yourself potentially two or three hours of time and hassle. And if the car has to go back to the customer the same day, you've done it non-invasively, which is it's a good goal. That's what we're aiming for. That um, gap, as I've said, basically means you've got uh, in between that, that point and that point there, those two gaps, that's 360 degrees of crank rotation. So the crank goes around one complete uh, cycle, if you like, from zero to 360. But as you know, we all know a bit about engines, otherwise we wouldn't be in this job. For a four stroke cycle to complete, it needs to do two revolutions, which is basically two full turns. And that obviously equates to 720 degrees of crankshaft rotation, which if you look at those two points there, between the gap, that gap there and that gap there, if you add them two together, 360 plus 360, that's 720 degrees of crank rotation. So that's one complete four-stroke cycle in a sense, 720 degrees crank rotation. So that's very useful to see that on the waveform in that sense. And that's really about it. That's all we need to do now. What we'll do, we'll now look at the, uh, we'll set the top of the engine off and we'll confirm what we can see on the scope and we'll visually confirm. On the BMW N20 and on many other engines, there's a QR code on the camshaft and it should point at 12 o'clock. And that 
pretty much when you've been doing this job as long as I have, you can kind of see immediately. If it's at 12, it's more or less bang on. Of course, there might be some fine sort of stretch where it might be half a degree, one degree out, and we'd still have to change the chain. But in this case, I'm expecting to see a massive difference because that's really shifted. It's like half an inch over on the screen, the magenta compared to the cyan code. Scope trace. So let's leave it there. Let's um, go and whip the engine cover off, the cam cover off, and let's visually confirm what we can see on the scope, but we'll see in real life what it looks like when it's shifted several degrees after top dead centre. Let's check it out. So, uh, the fault code 130 F20, something not surprising, and it means the exhaust bank camshaft position sensor signal as received by the DME is compared to what is stored in the lookup tables of the map of the DME is wrong, basically. So it knows there's an issue there, so it sets that fault code because um, the old codes used to be camshaft, crankshaft correlation, and it's just the same thing, basically. The cam is in one position, the crank's in another, and it's in the wrong position. And it can give that for, um, I don't know if that would, if there's a different one for retarded or advanced, maybe it's the same code, I'm not sure, but that's what it means, it's in the wrong position. Uh, 12408, 12308, they're not faults, they are just signifying that the DME has turned off the boost pressure to preset the engine because the timing's wrong. Simple as that. Uh, one thing I just want to mention again, I don't. I would need to overemphasize this, um, should have disconnected Vanos solenoids, put everything in a neutral position because the um, example scope trace we have, everything was in a neutral position with disconnected Vanos solenoids. Sometimes you'll have valve overlap for emissions reasons, so you need to minimise that when you're checking for chain stretch and put them in a neutral position. So just <laughs> don't do what I did and make sure you disconnect them so anyways. So that's pretty much it for the fault calls. There wasn't much, but it was kind of, I kind of knew really in that sense that it, with that, it was a little bit of a rattly old Joe, that engine. So no surprises to have this uh, chain stretch issue. So let's crack on and see what happens. So the next step with these now will be we'll take the cover off because I'm not going to just go off a scope trace. We've got the fault code for camshaft, crankshaft correlation anyway, so that's good. But we really always need to confirm it. And on this engine, <clears throat> it's not too difficult really because you've just got to undo the injector pipes. You can leave the injectors in, in the engine because they're here, they're in this little area. Take your coils out, take your plugs out, take your inner bits out, your coil sleeves. Make sure your fuel pump's at bottom dead centre and take that out, otherwise you'll damage it when you put it back. You can do that when you turn the engine over, that's no problem. And then we just have to undo the fuel rail, fuel rail bolts, and usually, can't do it on this, because there's no, normally I just swing it over, but in this case I'll take it off. And that's it, it's a bit of a faff on X5, there's no room at the back there, it's going to be a right nightmare to get. So yeah, that's what we need to do with this. But all this bro science, yeah bro, the chain's slack, man. Well, this chain before, when I first looked at it, you could literally lift it nearly one inch. And guess what? You can't lift it at all now. You can have really, really loose chains when in between stroke. That's just the way these four-cylinder engines work. Simple as that. That's just how it is. I don't mean the chain's worn or stretched, but I think it is. But time will tell, won't it? We'll have to whip that off and then Shabula Jackson. So it's time to start stripping this bad boy now. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna pull this pump off. Very careful, there's a big bracket on it there. When you put these on, you have to be really careful that you put the piston bottom dead center, the piston of the camshaft. Because if you don't do that, you'll bend it. You variably damage the fuel pump. It's a bit of a pain this, because it's an X5. And with it being an X5, there's no room really. We've got all this like crap in the way, which is not very pleasant, let me tell you. Right. So that's the fuel pump. And when you build these up, put it at the bottom dead centre, otherwise you put pressure on that when you turn it, you'll bend it, damage it, fall it goes for lack of fuel pressure. Well, obviously testing a solenoid, obviously, you would do it electrically, but you just want to at least see if it's, you know, if it moves. And that does, and it's equally likewise, the Vanos wheel itself. Can you, uh, you know, can you push it in your finger? Oh, we can, so that's all right. They could be faulty, it could be leaking, though, so there's no diagnostic test, really, is it? Anyway, we're almost ready to, to shock and roll now, so this wiring harness is just too off completely because there's no need to worry about that. 
so we're ready to plug it off in a minute I think. Injector's nicely capped off. Right, let's uh, see if this timing's right or not. So here we've got an N20 timing kit. Now, I don't need this, and I'll tell you why I don't need it in a minute, you'll see. What I am gonna do is just use, this as a, a lovely representation for you. This is how you align the timing discs afterwards. N20, N26. Right, so let me just show you that now very quickly. Try and avoid the number plate, good. Right, so when you're doing these engines, obviously when you undo the main bolts, these bolts here these wheels there's no keyways on these engines no bmws really have keyways so this is free spinning so you need to you need to line it up after well now i've not checked the can the crank timing but i don't really need it because it doesn't matter so just as we saw on the skull trace it's shifted to the right too far that means it's gone down too much it ain't gonna fit in a month of sundays absolutely no chance whatsoever totally out of alignment Intake cameras at 12 o'clock, QR code, that's perfect, there's nothing wrong with that one. Oh, but look at that, exhaust, camshaft, QR code is absolutely shifted to the right, which is exactly what the oscilloscope showed, literally, it was literally shifted to the right from the intake. Um, it's not right, is it? That's what it should look like on the exhaust side, basically. And that's why it's important also, just to make sure that you definitely disconnect them so they're not bounce when you scope it. And I didn't do that, I should have done that. In this case though, obviously we can still do our checks because the engine's off, Vanos should return to the neutral position anyway because it's spin loaded. So yeah, visual representation is at 12 o'clock. I'll do the same with this one. Just to, just to kind of graphically illustrate it, but it's huge really. I mean, it's not a perfect way of doing it, it's exaggerated, but it just gives you like more of a better idea of, of what was wrong with it really, sort of thing. So that's it, the diagnosis is kind of complete on this engine and um, it's uh, it's off now to strip it and replace the chain and the Vanos wheels and everything should be tickety boo basically. All's well, that kind of almost ends well. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video because I certainly enjoyed making it. Uh, just at the end of the video, I just want to cover a couple of topics just in case. So don't always assume that the chain is stretched because it's retarded the exhaust timing there could be other reasons for that now in this case the job is like basically almost completed now somebody else has got the job because i only did i do the fault finding and we have mechanical guys here who most of the time do the chains and stuff i just do the diagnosis so in that case it was correct diagnosis but you must also remember you've got other tools in your arsenal before you condemn the chain so if we had an example of the exhaust camshaft which is fixed to the vanos wheel with a bolt so they don't turn independently what if the vanos wheel was stuck in a retarded position it's possible and it happens sometimes so how can we get around that well what we can do we can check it we can the two pin solenoid we can basically ground it and we can apply a live on it so basically full duty cycle and we can push that plunger in and we can pull the plunger out and then we can look on the scope we can advance and retard each camshaft individually as we want no we didn't really need to touch the intake because there was nothing wrong with the intake so there's even probably an option i know there probably is on ista an option to do a valve timing test so you, that will do it for you and you can scope it and do a valve timing test and the reason you might want to do that is just to make sure that it's sweeping left and sweeping right on the scope so it's moving from the um, crank center line the, the it's almost in the center anyway if you look at it the um the, the good pan that I provided from that Ukrainian website, Rodkey. So it's more or less running in middle for both cams. There's no overlap at that set, at that stage at idle. And some BMWs they do have a valve overlap, and you can read about that online, and that can be to reduce the emissions basically. So there's reasons for overlap, and it can be adjusted infinitely with Vanos. It's very good. You've got two independent systems, so you can you can independently adjust the intake or the exhaust as it likes. But you want to make sure you haven't got a seized Vanos wheel because the intake was okay, but the exhaust, what if it was seized? Well, if you, um, let's say even you swap the solenoids and it's the same, you know you've definitely not got a faulty solenoid and usually it gives a fault code for that when it's broken because the value becomes a mega ohm value and the DME can pick that up. So you know you've probably not got a bad solenoid. Swap it by all means. It doesn't cost any. It takes two seconds to swap them over. If you've still got the same signal, 
get your power probe maestro whatever you have and uh, safely with it all fused up and everything like that so it can trip if, if there's a fault just advance and retard it watch the scope trace it should still at least go in the opposite direction although it'll return back to that position if, if the chain stretch basically so if you can if you can sort of move it like this it's a bit exaggerated but if, if it'll do that and it'll alter the valve timing and you can see it moving like this on the scope trace then that's great if it goes back to that position that it was in then obviously it is a stretched chain now i didn't really need to do that because i also looked at something else there's another tool we have in our little arsenal and that tool is you can use a valve um sorry a valve a timing chain tensioner dummy tensioner plunger and what that actually does is you put it in and it has a hollow section and if it stays um sort of inside and it's recessed then it means that the plunger has to go further out to tension the chain which means you've got stretching the chain and too much slack so that's another thing you can actually use you can actually use a dummy tensioner and bmw have that tool for the n20 again i didn't use it but um i've done so many n20 chains i kind of know when they stretch because i know i, I have the similar um, position physically when i look at the, the visually look at the camshaft and the qr code it's always shifted to that side when it's stretched so in that sense i knew it but if you're not as experienced as i am and you maybe not have done as many n20 engines as i certainly have over, over the last god knows how many years then there is other things as i've just mentioned just make sure you've got no problem with your variable valve timing and it's definitely moving use um the scan tool or use use a power probe or something to actuate it and on other engines uh, n54 n52 don't forget you've got screen filters for the vanos system so make sure you take them out and clean them because they will reduce the oil pressure and the response times switching times work and advance and retard the cam time will be severely impaired so on the other than n20 there is other options to consider so that's just a couple of things i wanted to cover on this uh, video i'm certainly not covering everything but at least i've shown you what a bmw um sort of valve timing event looks like when it's not timed correctly and the cause was the stretch chain so that's it hope you enjoyed the video and uh uh, yeah come back for more and please subscribe because um, the channel's growing and it's amazing and i want to reach more people and we get rid of all this bro science nonsense you know like uh, these people who think they know something about guys and perhaps they don't know as much as as what they probably should because they're not working on bmws every day as i am as other people are so i think we need to sort of make sure we do the job right really uh, no more of this guesswork and it might be this it might be that let's scope let's test let's do a lot of sampling and let's compare with known good values and then we can get the right diagnosis every time without guessing better for everybody and everybody learns and we get more good technicians in this field so when i'm retired in a few years we can leave this industry in safe hands and good capable hands thanks for watching